Guys, I just sold all of my Dogecoin and there's a very specific reason why that I'll get to in just a second. But I wanted to make this video to provide some alternate perspective for those of you guys who are extremely passionate about Dogecoin because I feel like seeing the alternate perspective can help you prepare for the potential worst eventuality and if you are prepared for whatever happens, you will not be disappointed. Now, I really think Dogecoin has a good amount of potential downside from the point that it's currently at. I made a video a few days ago talking about why I bought into Dogecoin at around 8 cents and today it broke through 20 cents for a little bit and uh, I, I couldn't hold it any longer and I sold it all and I'm gonna get to why that is. So if you find this video helpful, please smash the like button. If you are huge on Dogecoin and you're gonna get offended by this video, just take the time to watch it before you get upset by what I'm saying because I really think my perspective will be valuable for a lot of you guys. I'm not making this video to hate on Dogecoin or anything like that, so don't get me wrong. I just wanted to provide my perspective because I think it could help some of you guys out. So subscribe if you have not already. I make a ton, a ton of videos about stocks and uh, I've been green every single day this month green every single day except for one day in March and uh, I mean you guys really don't want to miss this so definitely check out the rest of my videos on this channel like the video if you haven't already and uh, yeah let's dive into my computer so I can talk about why I sold all of my dogecoin all right guys so I'm at my laptop and this is the chart for dogecoin and there's one pattern in particular that I want you guys to pay very close attention to because if I zoom in here you can see every single time that Dogecoin breaks out past all-time highs, it has an ex what's the word? explosive breakout. And we, you get a bunch of really big green candles. You can see here, it broke out really nicely, and uh, then it pulls back and consolidates for a pretty long time. Then it breaks out past those highs again, sees a nice breakout, consolidates some more. Breaks out past the highs, consolidates some more. I ended up buying again right here at around 8 cents when it when it broke past those highs. Might have been like 8.8, .8, somewhere in there. And uh, beautiful, insane breakout, went all the way up to 15, and then pulled back and had some nice consolidation, went as low as uh, almost 10 cents. And now, we're right here. It just ripped past the high again, so you could have bought the breakout at 15 cents. It ran all the way up to 20 cents, and now it pulled back again. And it's currently at a point where it's green enough that I feel like it's justified to lock in some gains. Now, you guys might be thinking, David, if you think this is going farther in the future, why on earth would you sell any right now? And the reason for that is, I have seen these charts play over and over and over and over and over and over. And from my perspective, I would rather sell and then have it keep going higher than not sell and have it come back lower. Now, I have a ton of examples that I want to show you guys, um, but whenever a chart gets too many green candles in a row, it always pulls back and it sees a big pullback. And if you don't take any off the table, you're going to be wishing that you did. Now, I'm not saying that Dogecoin is done here. In my video that I made a couple days ago, the, uh, the realistic price target that I gave for Dogecoin was 25 cents. I think that's pretty doable and it could definitely still get up to that point. So may I have sold too soon? Absolutely. But again, I would rather sell too soon than sell too late because I would rather be prepared if there is a nice big dip. Say this, this pulls back. It pulls back down to 13 cents or even 16 cents, 15 cents, whatever, 10 cents, God forbid. At that point, I'll be able to dip by and I'll be able to take advantage of those incredible dips that Doge gives. Now, you can't really see here too much, uh, but whenever you get a bunch of red candles in a row, it always sees a nice bounce. And that's how human emotions work in general. Whenever you get too many of one color candle in a row, it always pulls back and you see something of the other direction. So you get too many red candles in a row, too many people are selling, finally enough people step in that it starts to bounce and it starts to go up. You get too many people buying, enough sellers come in that it starts to come back down. So that's just how human psychology works. And uh, I have learned over the years that if you do not lock in at least some gains when something is running, you typically regret it. You typically regret it. And if you're up over 100% of your position, it's always a good idea to lock some in because you could sell half your position and now 
Everything you invested beforehand, you have for free. You got all that money back out. Now the only thing you have invested are profits, which is something really cool. So I definitely don't recommend all you guys sell your entire position. You know, I'm not saying to do that. Also, recommend is a, a you know a touchy word here. I'm not a financial advisor. Just keep that in mind. Always consult with a professional before trading Dogecoin. Um, but when you have a stock, or in this case a cryptocurrency that runs super hard it typically pulls back pretty hard. And I have some great examples of that. Let me uh, let me find it for you. So here's one good example of that. So ENZC is a nice stock. Uh, I traded a lot. I'm still trading. I traded today. I've made a lot of money on this stock. And you can see this stock came from, I mean, God, what was it at? I mean, it was pretty much as low as Dogecoin was. I mean, this thing came from 0.0006 here. I mean, I think over here was 0.005. So, I mean, I don't know, 0.003. I'm not sure what Dogecoin started at. I'm not sure what Dogecoin started at, but I mean, this thing was this thing was pretty close to where Dogecoin started at. This thing was pretty close to where Dogecoin started at, and uh, you can see after the run, they had some big pullbacks. So whenever you get an exponential run like that, you get a bunch of green candles in a row. The the the, the chart goes insane. There's always some type of big pullback. There's always some type of big pullback, which is the reason that I sold my Doge now. Maybe I should have partial sold, you know, locked some in, but kept some in case it really goes exponential because it could do that. You know, I mean, technically it could break out over 25 and go straight to 50 cents before pulling back all the way down to 25. And maybe I'll be dip buying at 25 after it goes to 50 and be thinking, damn, why didn't I wait so I could sell at 25? But that's a risk that I'm willing to take personally because I've seen these charts so, so many times. Uh, this is another good example of why you want to lock in your gains. So this stock, I mean, we had people in our Discord trading this. Uh, Discord link in the description. I have to, you know, plug myself as always. But you can see that this stock ran up a ton. I mean, this thing came from sub pennies, and in just a few days, it went all the way up to above nine cents. And uh, we had people who didn't lock in gains, and the next day it opened down at you know 1.4 cents. That is an 80% loss overnight. Now I don't expect Dogecoin to do that because obviously, you know, there's a lot of a lot of people in there. there there's there's a lot of people who, who are holding this and it trades all day every day. So it can never gap down that much. But we could see a pretty big panic. And I think if I go back to the statistic where we talk about the fact that I think half of, of all Doge's supply is held by only 20 people. So I think, I, I, I forget what it is, like 60 billion, 65 billion Dogecoin are held by just 20 people. So all it would take is... Uh, you know, one or two of them to start dumping and, and start locking in some gains and the thing is going to tank. And that's something that Elon Musk talked about. Now, the I would say another reason that I think it's a good idea to lock in some gains is the fact that when you get something that runs a lot, but there's no, there's no real change in it, that is when it makes sense to lock in gains. So say you have, I don't know, say you have a company that that is that, you know, you buy in at a dollar, right? And they come out with some really good news. It goes up to $5. They come out with some more news. It goes up to $10. They, they, they get bought out by Apple. It goes up to $20. Then Apple turns it into whatever and it, it goes up to $50. Okay, good things are happening with this company and that's why the price is going up. But say you buy into a stock and you buy it at $1. And then it goes from $1 to 2 to, to 5 to 7 to 10 to 15 And there's been absolutely no change. There's absolutely no news. It's all price action. At that point, it makes sense to lock some in. Now, I personally don't think anything has really changed with Doge. I think Bitcoin is running and is at all-time highs. And I think overall the crypto market is really hot. So that's why Dogecoin is up a lot. But I think at some point we're going to get a pretty big pullback. And if you don't lock in some gains near the top, it's going to hurt because you won't be able to dip by as much. You know, you're not going to have the profits from the top to lock it in at the bottom. I have no idea how hard Dogecoin is going to pull back. I have no idea how hard it's going to run. But I just ask that, you know, if it goes exponential at some point, you guys consider locking some in because it will pull back. It will pull back. Uh, here's another great example of, you know, stocks that go straight up and then see huge pullbacks. You know, this stock went from 0.0001 and it went as high as $7, $7.70 after a reverse split. But then it came all the way back down to, you know, $2.85. So there's a big pullback off of there, you know, over 50%. If Doge is currently at $0.19, cents, what would a 50% pullback look like? You know, if this thing pulled back to $0.09, cents, would you regret not selling any up here? 
I know I would, and that's personally why I sold. So I just wanted to provide this perspective for you guys. Again, I'm not a Dogecoin hater by any means. If you guys are thinking, I'm sure some people are gonna comment this, so let me just say it right now. If you guys are saying I'm making this video to drop the Dogecoin price so I can get back in at a cheaper price, you're an idiot. It trades over $10 billion volume a day. I mean, maybe I cause a couple thousand dollars in selling volume with this video. Okay, big deal. I. Personally, I'm going to have no effect on the price. So if you say that, come on, man, come on. That's not why I'm making this video. I just hate when people don't lock in gains and then they turn into bag holders, especially if you're someone who's buying up here at 20 cents, 19 cents, 18 cents. You know, it has the potential to pull back a lot past that. So keep that in mind. 10 cents is a lot better entry price than 20 cents. 8 cents, 6 cents is a lot better entry price than 20 cents. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying the run is over, but if it goes exponential, please lock some in, especially if it goes more exponential than this. And just, you know, consider consider taking some gains, guys, because I, I hate seeing people who subscribe to me lose their gains. Nothing makes me more angry, except for when people ask silly questions and then I have to punt babies. So we don't want that either. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you made it to the end, uh, you know, check out some of my other videos if you are, you know, not already subscribed. Because again, I talk about a lot of really helpful stuff in, in, in terms of stocks and making money and travel hacks and credit, all that stuff. So yeah, pretty helpful. Hopefully you guys, you, you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, I think you know the drill by now. I say it every video, but let's grow better together. Preguntar, bebé, dime por qué te mientes. No puedes esconder todo lo que tú por mí sientes.